Bending moment is absent in case of a hinge connection and essentially, therefore, the bending moment will be zero at point A. Or in roller connection also, the bending moment is zero at the point of the roller connection. Now, from A to B, we have a constant value of the shear force. That essentially means that B is constant. Now, the slope of the bending moment diagram will essentially be my shear force. So, from here, from A to B, I have a constant value of the slope of the bending moment diagram. A constant value of the slope of the bending moment diagram. As shear force is equal to constant, we can see it from here. And we know that the slope of the bending moment diagram is essentially constant. So, therefore, it will be having a constant value of the slope. From A to B, the bending moment will be having a constant slope. And this corresponds to essentially a straight line. Either a straight line which is parallel to this axis, but this can't be it because essentially the slope has a magnitude. So if this was this, then essentially the slope would have to be zero, which is not in this case. So there must be a straight line with a definite slope, which will be given by the shear force basically. So between A and B, there will be a slope, right? There will be a straight line with a definite slope, say this is equal to theta 1, right? At B, what happens? At B, there is a, there's a change of this slope. That is, it will be a straight line, definitely. It will be a straight line because from B to C again, there is a constant value of the shear force. But at B, there will be a change in the slope of this bending moment diagram. And now it's very easy to see from here that the magnitude of this slope essentially decreases. Right. But it is of a positive nature. This essentially means that though the sagging moment defined by this is going to increase, but the rate of change, the rate of increase of the sagging moment will not be will not be so much in the region BC that is that was basically in region AB. In AB, the rate of change of the sagging moment was theta 1. In region BC, the rate of change of the sagging moment will be theta 2 and this theta 2 will obviously be lesser than theta 1. So essentially it will be having a slope like this till point C. Now at point C what happens? At point C we will see that the shear force changes its sign. From a positive sign it becomes some sort of a negative sign. So essentially what does it mean? It means that there is no increase in sagging moment from point C now. There will obviously be a decrease in sagging moment as the slope is of a negative sign. Right. So the sagging moment will not increase but it will decrease from point C to point D. And essentially this means that it will have some kind of a slope like this wherein this is equal to theta 3. Right. At point D there is a further decrease in this slope. In this negative slope or the negative slope will increase, right? Or the negative value of the shear force will increase or the negative slope will increase. And as such, the rate of decrease of this sagging moment will be greater in the region D than CD. And essentially, this will be like this. So this is equal to theta 4. So the, shear, so the bending moment diagram is of this nature. From here I can make some inferences. In the region defined by AB, I have a constant value of shear force and this value of shear force is essentially the slope of this bending moment diagram. So the slope of the bending moment diagram as it is constant, therefore it will be a straight line with a definite slope. At point B, obviously it is having a positive value of shear force that does mean that the bending moment will continue to increase. But whether it will increase at a faster pace or at a slower pace will be defined by magnitude. And we know essentially from here that R1 minus P1 is essentially lesser than R1. So therefore, the slope at B of the bending moment diagram will obviously be lesser than the slope at A. And therefore, theta 2 will be lesser than theta 1. At point C, what happens? At point C, there is a change of the sign of the shear force. That is, the po from positive value of the shear force, it becomes some sort of a negative value. So as such what happens is that there will be 
a change in the direction of the slope as such, right? If the slope of the bending moment diagram from positive, it will become negative. And this is defined by theta 3. And at point C, where there is a change in sign, where there is a change in the, uh, where I should say there is a change in the, in the sign of the slope of the bending moment diagram, we have the peak points. And there are essentially, there can be many peak points like this, right? And essentially, the maximum peak point will give us the maximum value of the bending moment. In this case, there is only one peak point, wherein there is a change of slope of this bending moment diagram, right? And essentially, this is a max, right? Now, at point D, what happens is that the, there's an there's a, there's a increase in negative slope, or the negative value of shear force increases. And that essentially means that the, the sagging moment will continue to will decrease at a faster pace in the region defined by D than at the region defined by CD. So the slope will be higher and theta 4 as such will be greater than theta 3. So this is all for this lecture and I hope that, okay, I, I, I got to find uh, to the bending moment diagram, right? And essentially M max will be what? For example, if suppose this is my A and this is suppose B, right? If I cut a region here, then essentially, or if I cut, say, suppose, a region here, and this is, suppose, my x, right, and this is nothing but mn, so m at this section will be essentially equal to r1 into x, right, clockwise, p1, anticlockwise, p1, into x minus a minus p2 into x minus b right now at c definitely this x becomes b so this sign this is omitted this becomes p1 b minus a and this one becomes r1 into b so essentially m max is equal to r1 into b minus p1 into b minus a right this is how we find the bending moment basically and so this is all for this lecture. I hope you have enjoyed this. And in the next lecture, what I'll try to do basically is I will try to find the philosophy and what it what goes behind the uh, shape of the bending moment diagram and the shear force diagram for essentially uniformly distributed case of floating. And uh, next to next lecture, I will try to take some examples and try to solve them uh, for the different shear force and to obtain the different shear forces and bending moment diagram. That's all for this lecture. Thanks a lot.